Tasks are up at least. And uh, a message from Tim. Team moved for safety reasons. Relocated to emergency comm ship. Tasks as normal. Fire is PR disaster. Clean up duties. Sorry, I'll contact soon. At least he's safe. Now I'm an errand boy for the Unitrench PR department. Coffee first. According to the Unitrench spokesman, the fire is well under control, and any wildlife impacted are being monitored by dedicated specialists. Indeed, from the shore here, there's little trace of any accident at all. The seas are calm, and everything seems ship-shape and above board. Back to you in the studio. <sighs> Looks like the PR team are doing just fine without me. Impacted wildlife. Shit. I hope Joe's all right. Yeah. 
I'm taking enough of this shit already. What? Breaking the rules. Let the bastards fire me. Deserted. Did they just up and leave?
Jesus. What were they doing down here? Shit. What the hell is that? Go, 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 go. Garden set. 
That looks like our garden set. I remember there was music and balloons. It was Lemire that we didn't know she'd like him. We were so worried. <laughs> she almost fell. Henry pushed too hard and she toppled forward like a nodding dog. I'm sorry I'm late, baby. I got caught up in... I had to... Daddy... Roger called me a name. A name? He said I was a, a dweeb. Roger said that? Yeah. Well then, I guess I'll have to have a word with Roger. But look, I brought you something. A present? <laughs> a present. Happy birthday, sweetheart. <laughs> this is Lumiere. Lumiere, this is Pearl. I want you two to take good care of each other. Okay? I promise. Thank you, Daddy. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Bye, Joe. Job. Piece of cake. Oil is built on death. It causes death to a cycle. This fucking company. Fuel light flashing.
should call Emma. Go for a walk. Daddy, where will John Paul go now? John Paul? Mommy said he went away. That he didn't want to swim anymore. Oh. You mean your goldfish? <sighs> well. John Paul died. Pearl. Yeah. We all... We all die, sweetie. I didn't want him to die. No one ever wants their friends to die. But... That's life. It's... All a big circle. Yeah. Everything dies. And and when it does, it goes back into the earth and helps make new life. Even John Paul. Even John Paul. That's why it's important to remember them. The ones we lose. They're a part of that circle. And as long as we remember them, they're never really gone. Hello, user Stanley Moray. Wayne. What's this? Looks like a distress call from Sector B. Tim mentioned some of the drones have been sent over there, but this. This is coming in manually from a relief team alpha. Secure channel, no way to respond. Come on, Tim. Jesus. 
Starting to feel left behind here. Stan, come in. Finally. I saw the news. Is there fire? Finally out. We, um, we took some casualties. Oh, God. Yeah. Press haven't found out yet, but they'll be hell to pay when they do. Did I do this? Is this my fault? What? The main flow. I... I increased the pressure. The accident. No. No, get that notion out of your head this instant. It was bad luck is all. The storm, you know. And the drill platform going haywire. It'll take years to undo the damage. But... Enough. We're getting you out of there. That's why I'm calling. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's... probably a good... Yeah, okay. Boat with the retrieval capsules on its way? It'll take a day or two. Until then... One final job. Sector B. Sector B? The distress call. Checking. I haven't... There's no record of any distress call from Sector B on this end. Hmm. Coming through loud and clear here. On the Union Trench emergency frequency. Odd. Tim? I knew they were hiding something. So... What's the plan? Head over there. Check it out. And stay in radio contact. Something fishy's going on here. Roger that. Setting out now. Last chance to stock up. This is gonna be a long one. So they 
say. So, to answer your question, we don't really know what you're getting into. Save that it's probably not good. Okay. Okay.
access to Sector B is currently denied to anyone without a direct mandate from corporate. Okay, well, uh, bad news. That's exactly where I am. I don't understand. There's nothing down there except the admin office and a storage bunker, and, and the rig, of course. Are they worried some mad bastard might try and blow it up? People on the news seem pretty angry about the leak. Should I... still be here? That bugger corporate bunch of assholes. I want to know what it is they're hiding down there. Coming up on the admin center. Find out what that signal's all about, but stay safe. First sign of trouble, you leave. Head towards that. Got a capsule here, Tim. And empty. Looks like a rescue team. All right. But if everyone was evacuated, a rescue team for who? Or what? Still no details on this end. If they sent a team, they did it outside of normal procedure. There's a black hole where any briefing files would be. Always a good sign. Heading to the admin bunker. Main door's locked. From the inside. That's not... normal. I don't... Why would a relief team block themselves inside an evacuation zone? That's good. Or very, very bad. This is oil. 
Refined. Why is this here? There's a small storage bunker right by the admin center. God knows why, but that's where you are. down. Corporate can bill me. This is locked down.
wonder if these have anything to do with those leech things I saw. That special oil. Possibly. I asked around, covertly. No one's ever heard of anything like that. Or any special oil. Admin Center proper now. Home sweet home. The SOS is coming from somewhere in that area. Check around. Killers are circling. Try not to take that as an admin. some sort of locker room it it's completely submerged
I was seeing things. Guess not. Stuff is everywhere. Don't tell me there's been a leak. No, this isn't oil. This... I saw it in the drone bunker. Some sort of invasive sea life? Leeches or something? Begin with the leeches. It's oil, trust me. When it hits water that deep, it floats in these big globs. Very leech-like. Tim. Whatever I'm seeing, 
It's not oil. Back! Get back! Signals coming from the server room. Looks like the server room. Oh god. Is that... Tim, found one of the team. Can't be sure, but he looks dead. Jesus. Doors locked? Of course. You need to get in there, find out what happened. Head to the control room upstairs, see if we can't end this bloody lockdown. First, though, give me a scan of those servers. Might be able to grab some info. I don't believe it. Huh? Those rotten, conniving, C-suite fuckers. Tim. This wasn't a relief mission. This was a search and destroy. What? The team. They were sent down here to wipe the servers, the records, everything. They initiated the evacuation. They flooded the place. We were never in any danger. They just wanted us out of the way so they could clean up their dirty laundry. Oh. Oh, shit. Now what? Keep going. We need... We need to know what happened. No budging this.
Captain. It's still locked down, Tim. Gotta find another way in. Okay. All right. Maybe... Maybe through the living quarters. There's another entrance. On my way. Jesus Christ. You know, I just realized I missed that place. The office. Broken chair, wobbly desk, constant damp. But now it's gone. Funny what we get attached to, eh? You can say that again. Made an old man feel important for once, sending out orders and watching pools like yourself move about like pieces on a chessboard. Oh, thanks. left in a hurry. These look like the crew cabins. Emergency access to the control room should be through here. for the command control board. That'll get you into the server room. Done. The lockdown's lifted. Head back to the server room. Let's get this over with. Jumbo. 
bugger it. The thing's all at an off switch. Shut them all down. Hold the plug. <laughs> One down. Yours, your culprit. Oh no. Tim? Hello? Anyone? She's in the toy section. Who's that? You. Sweetheart? What are you doing here? I'm waiting for a mom, Sally. I think you made her sad. Fighting about. We weren't fighting. We talked about the. But that fight. Hey, <laughs> the fight was no big deal, you know? Everything was. Everything's fine. I'm out, Tim. I'm done. I saw. The data erasure has stopped and... No. I mean, I'm done. With this. All of this. 
Okay, lad, I, um... Yeah. That's probably for the best. I'll schedule a retrieval crew ASAP. You get yourself back to the module. Let's get out of here. Tim, I need to tell you something. All right. It's about Pearl. <sighs> she followed me here. Some part of her. Not sure I understand. Neither do I. I've seen things down here. I had no idea it were possible. Stan, those headaches, did they ever come back? What? No. No, I'm fine. Well, wait, you, you think this is narcosis? That I dreamt up the thing that nearly killed me? No, no, I believe you. This is a lot. I know. We'll talk more when I get up there. But there's something very wrong down here, Tim. Okay, lad. Whatever it is, we'll see it sorted. Together. Lives hell before she makes them better. 
She's a Templar for sure. <laughs> Only with you, Tim. Only with you. <laughs> I should call. Tell her. Tell her I'm coming home. Good news. Your pickup's closer than we thought. They'll be on station tomorrow morning. There'll be a capsule waiting. And, um, comms are back up at the module. I know... I know you came down here to... get away, but, um, with all the shit that's happened... I know, Tim. It's... it's okay. I guess this is it. Last night under the waves. Need to call him. It's been too long already. Stan? There's a fucking signal on another one of Tim's bullshit. Stan! Stan, can you hear me? <laughs> I'm here. I'm... I'm here. I saw the rig on the news. Worst platform accident in over a decade, they said. The environmental damage alone. And I can't even worry about that because my husband refuses to listen to reason. I'm coming back. All to chase some flight of... What? I'm done. It's all... done. I'm coming home. Tim's sending a boat. Tomorrow. I'm... that's... okay. Okay, good. Um, why am I not... Why do I feel there's a but? I just... I can't leave her like this. I think she needs my help. Pearl. Yes. And... what does she say? I don't expect you to understand. Understand? What is there to understand when you're not making any sense? I'm pregnant! What? <laughs> I'm... I'm pregnant, Stan. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my... <laughs> We're gonna have a... A baby. <laughs> We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> oh. oh my god. I I can't. Alright, look, I I know I haven't been uh, in, in, a, in a way I've just been I, I I just miss her so much, Emma. Every time I close my eyes, I see her, I, I see you, I see us, and it... And it never stops hurting. And you think it's been different for me? I haven't had a single waking moment of clarity in three years, but I... I knew I couldn't let that pain define me, or I would never, ever escape it. I love you, but starting again, moving on, it is hard, Stan. I'm gonna need you with me.
tell me, if you leave us, I will never forgive you. A baby. I... How can I possibly... You've got to get over yourself. Once and for all. For them. Redo from start. All right, last check in. Your pickup will arrive around sunrise tomorrow, and Emma's pregnant. What? Yeah. Bugger me. Well, congratulations. How are you? How are you sitting with it? Ah. Uh... Still... processing. Ah, it's exactly what you need. It'll be perfect, I'm telling you. Hmm. What about you? What happens now? That is a little more complicated. You know, maybe I'll go back to the boats. There's still a few decent crews out there. As for the data Unitrends tried to erase, well, you know how clumsy I can be. No telling whose mailbox it'll end up in. <laughs> I'll look forward to watching the fallout from a distance. Talk to you tomorrow. In person, this time. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Sleep well, Stan.
Can you speak to me? Where are we going? Slide or something. The 
if I can just push through here. Okay. Okay, let's see what we can see. Joining you sooner than I hoped. Okay, you. Think you've about worn out that armchair. 
Let's get out of here. When did you get so big, huh? Up the wooden hill to Bedfordshire. Up the wooden hill to Bedfordshire. Here we go. Daddy, I had a good day. There we go. Package delivery. One sleepy girl. Better? Hmm, better. It's cold. Let me close the window. Under the covers now. Okay, Daddy. Wait. Where's Lumiere? Daddy, I can't find Lumiere. Hey, hey, hey. He can't have gone that far. Not with those little legs of his. Don't worry, I'll find him. There you are. Been on quite the journey together, eh? Huh. Thanks for the ride. Found him. Think he was making a break for it. Maybe he was trying to find you, so you could tell us a story. Okay. <laughs> okay, what'll it be? The whale song. All right, love. All right. Settle down. The whale song. Once upon a time, there was a baby whale. A cute calf, roughly three tons from head to tail. His mother was a different beast entirely over 30 meters long and 70 tons of love so motherly. The whale calf, not even close to her, worried without delay. Mummy, when you are gone, what will I become? Its mother would gently say, I will always be close to you. It was not a terrible lie to start because our dead keep on living here in our heart but it wasn't fair for the baby whale who had seen his father died from a harpoon's travail he asked again so where has papa gone his mother took a deep breath and replied heads on he is still here. His soul is swimming next to us, far and near. Then she added, I will bring you to a place without lies, a place without pretty sights. Always remember this, and you will move on. On the beach, where many corpses lie, Whales in decomposition, skin dry, regurgitated balls of plastic for pillows. The calf's eyes got wet, and before long, tears flowed, warm and clear. His heart heavy, he started a song, sorrowful and sincere. From the baby's ache, out of the waves, a miracle happened. The air started to vibrate, the ground to 
to shake. One of the still bodies rose and widened. Despite the waste and the rubbish, against the fragile cycle, death was ascending to the sky, across eternity's threshold. Then death would fall down to feed the earth, continuing a never-ending cycle in which we always find a morrow. Okay, love. Time for bed. No, Daddy, please. It's, it's so cold down here. And lonely. Stay. Please. Oh, God. Sweetheart. I don't know if I can. <sighs> Could I really stay? Emma, the baby, <laughs> Pearl's here, she's, she's right here, <sighs> I can't just leave, can I, should I, Emma needs me, I, need her. No, I have to stay. I won't lose my daughter. Not again. I... I'm sorry, sweetheart. I've... Mummy needs me. We're having a... We need each other. I love you, Daddy. <sighs> I... miss you. I'll always miss you. Always. died three years ago. Seems like hardly any time at all. And an eternity. 
It was her laugh that hurt most. It's absence. Like when she'd jump onto our bed on Saturday mornings. When Emma sneak up behind her, lift her overhead. The house was empty without it. But I still hear it. Every single day. It's mine now. And I guess that's the point. Life is one long series of partings. But no one ever really leaves. We move on, knowing we carry them with us. Pearl is with me now. I will love her for as long as I love anything. But for the first time in a long time, I feel unburdened, free, like I don't have to run from the future. I have to let her go, but I'll never leave her behind, because none of us are alone.